A while ago, I made a video about the ultimate Geopic. This one here. It's a brick hammer style head with tungsten faces from Trowan Holden in Vermont. I put this 14 inch fiberglass handle on it with a safety grip and it's served me very well for a year in the field. And you'd have to say the wear resistance of the tungsten faces is very impressive. To give you an idea of just how well the tungsten faces resist wear, this is the brand new head out of the box with nice square edges on the tungsten carbide faces. This is the same model after a year in the field with no regrinding. You can see a little rounding of the corners, but still a very effective shape. And this is the chisel end brand new. On the unbroken part of the year old one, you can see that the edge is still quite usable. By comparison, this is a regular steel face hammer. Brand new, they're a bit more rounded than the worn tungsten face to avoid chipping. And after a year in the field, uh, well, I really should have reground this one a long time ago. Keeping those neat square edges on the face of the hammer is very important for reducing the amount of effort required to break rocks, as I discussed in a previous video. But I encountered a couple of problems. First, I got a few fiberglass splinters in my hands after damaging the handle by mishitting outcrops. I fixed that issue with some epoxy coating, but it's not a particularly pretty solution. Second, I managed to break the tungsten face on the chisel end. I did that when I was trying to break a sample off a particularly tough quartz vein. I found a small crevice in the vein and I hit the chisel into the crevice and after multiple failed attempts, a really big hit cracked a piece off the tungsten blade. Now, that was clearly my bad. This is a geopic, not a sampling hammer. And I should have been using one of these. And a hammer that was designed for the job. Now, the lesson there is that when you get frustrated, that's probably a warning that it's time to change tools. Anyway, for its real job, this design's worked exceptionally well, so I wanted to put together another one. And this time, I wanted a fiberglass handle with a plastic sheath on it to limit that splintering problem. I found two options through Trow and Holden. One of them is this 15 inch straight shaft with a plain grip for engineers hammers and the other one's a 14 inch claw hammer but it's got a slightly asymmetrical handle on there. The 15 inch straight handle is probably best suited to the size and weight of that head but it might be a fraction too long for good balance. The 14 inch claw hammer is probably about the most comfortable for my small hands uh, but it might feel a little bit odd when you flip it around to hit with the chisel end on the other side. But since I do 90% of my work with the front face of the hammer, I think that should be okay. The tang on this one's also a little bit skinny, uh, and that might be an issue for fitting the head, but it's got a spring on it there that'll hold it in the center. Anyway, I wanted to try both. So I bought two heads and I'll fit them both up and give them a thorough test in the field during this coming field season. I had to cut about 10 millimeters off the shaft of the engineer's handle, so the end would sit just below the top of the head. The claw hammer handle was also a bit too long, but it needed a bit more work because the centering clip would have extended above the head. So I cut it down and ground another groove for the clip. The plastic barb on the engineer's handle was also a little too thick for the eye of the head, so I trimmed it with a knife until I got a perfect fit. The plastic shroud on the claw hammer handle is designed for a rectangular eye, so I had to trim that a little as well to make a neat fit. After reinstalling the foam washer and the centering clips, I was ready to set the handles. First, I put a piece of masking tape over the top of the eye to stop the glue leaking out. 
it has to be really well stuck on to make a good seal. The handles come with a little pack of Hardman epoxy that's designed specifically for fitting heads on striking tools. One pack is enough to fit two hammer heads if you're careful. You just cut the pack open with scissors, squeeze out both parts, then mix them together for a couple of minutes until the glue is a smooth, consistent, creamy colour. I filled the eye about half full with epoxy and spread some over the end of the handle to make sure all the surfaces were wetted and to fill any potential bubble gaps. Then I pushed the handle slowly in from above, wiping off the excess glue as it came out of the gaps. I used the same technique for the engineer's handle. When the handles were fully inserted, I stood the hammers upright overnight for the epoxy to set. I put them on a silicon baking mat just in case any glue leaked out. It's about the only thing that epoxy won't stick to. After about 18 hours, I peeled off the masking tape. A little bit of glue escaped from the one with the engineer's handle, but you can see it came away cleanly from the silicon mat and I just cleaned it up with a razor blade. But the epoxy needs at least another day to reach full strength before the hammer is ready to hit anything. So here they are, ready to go to work. The engineer's handle ended up at about 15 and a half inches installed, and the claw hammer handle at about 12 and a half inches. I think I'll start with the long one first, because my first job's in a granite terrain, and a little extra separation between the shrapnel and my hand would probably be a good idea. I'll take the short one on my next overseas job because it's a little bit easier to pack. 